Hey guys, Nathan Industries here with a uh, episode of Kerbal Space Program. Now I know I haven't, you know, started from the beginning, read the menu or whatnot, but you know, I think it's best just to skip the loading and cut to the chase. So, what we have here is my first space shuttle that I've managed to build. But unlike your uh, regular space shuttle, um, this one has got boosters on the external tank. And it's also got a, little, a few boosters on the side of the booster. This one's built to be more like the Soviet space shuttle, you know, attached to the Angira rocket. Or Energia, whatever it's called. So I've got to do this procedure carefully because if I fire any boosters at the wrong time, this whole thing is going to crash. Uh, before we take off here and carry on, I'll just make sure the recording is going well because it's going surprisingly smooth for this game. Because normally, I must have turned the graphics down somewhere to increase performance. So that's probably why it uh, is behaving better now than it was. And yes, this thing's got jet engines, so it can fly like a plane, too. Alright. This shuttle, instead of rolling, we just go forward. Because every time I've tried to roll with this thing, it would actually make it more unstable. Instead, I just pinch this thing forward. Because its, uh, it's thrust-to-weight ratio is a little bit uh, wonky, so... And we mostly don't pitch forward until we get at least a good 30 miles up. Or 30,000 meters, perhaps. You know, when the air gets thin enough where it won't be a major problem, we pitch forward. So if you pitch forward too early, you have a chance of ripping wings off. I did have this shuttle blow up on liftoff at least once because um, I primed one of the boosters uh, by accident. And when I pitched forward, it pointed one of the boosters at one of the pieces. I was still testing it and it actually burned up part of the booster and it caused the thing to lose control. And when it pitched backward, the wings got ripped off by the force of the wind. So to prevent this, I just move the boosters a little further apart and add my own custom uh, attachments. Because otherwise, you know, the bottom of the tank sort of, you know, it'll go inside of the other booster and it'll glitch out. As you can see, the external tank fuel is also going into the shuttle, so that the shuttle itself doesn't run out of fuel. But when we get to a certain height, these boosters are going to drop off, and the external tank is actually going to fire its rocket boosters. So that we're able to make it the rest of the way into space, while keeping this thing steady. Because the tank is too big and too heavy, because it will cause the shuttle to pitch forward and start flipping. We don't want that to happen. So the tanks boosters have to fire at the right moment. So space shuttle stealth looking pretty good. 
best name of the shuttle is Space Shuttle Stelson. I think that's a cool name for a shuttle. This is the first of the fleet. I'm going to be building more of them. The sonic boom of air going forming around it. We're going so fast. I think we're entering max Q as of right now. Alright, everything's on schedule. You see, I have some place to be at a certain time of night tonight, so. Just making sure I'm not out of time here. It's still light out even though it's 7 p.m. Kind of strange now. Just kept going, kept going like pitch black outside and it's like 7 a.m. It feels like the middle of the night. I mean 7 p.m. I can't fast forward this launch because if I do, it might cause the boosters to glitch out and explode. It might jeopardize the structural and terror integrity of uh, the spacecraft. So as you can see, the booster, the, the rocket engines that were attached to the boosters are cut off, but I still have plenty of solid fuel for So now we're starting to rock into the upper atmosphere. Right now I'm uh, holding the shuttle up so we don't pitch forward too much. Because we're going to have a little bit of lack of thrust for a minute on uh, the rocket's end. So we got to provide enough power to get into orbit, but also enough uh, enough stability as to where we don't tip over and lose orbit. The goal right now is to get into orbit, get our seven astronauts into space. like we're slightly out of line. Nope, nope, that's not it. See the gimbal? We're slightly out of line. So let's realign a bit. That's better. The gimbal tells us where we're pointing. So the gimbal is everything. That gimbal goes into orange, you're in big trouble. Especially if you're, you know, riding a rocket to orbit. We still got a lot of atmosphere to go though. We gotta pitch up a little bit.
just did notice, this shuttle actually has five rocket engines, like, yep. So this is actually a very powerful, really big shuttle. It is designed for maximum speed and power. That would be a jet engine cutoff, that would mean that we are approaching the upper parts of the atmosphere. We're, we are now towards the area where the SR-71 Blackbird would be flying. Or that NASA plane that can fly uh, at least 100,000 feet. So we're, we are caressing the edge of space, as we know it. Once we break 1,000 meters per second, we should be in the clear. Then we can start circularizing our orbit. If you want a more realistic experience, I'd get that more realism mod that, you know, adds real planets into the Kerbal Space Program and real measurements. Need to go a little bit higher, come on. Any second now, these uh, boosters will drop off and just check on the tank. Make sure it didn't screw up. It would just Sonic engine cut off. We are almost at stage three of the ascent. The boosters drop off, and then we rocket our way the rest of the way into orbit. When we start circularizing at stage four. wings. Do not bump my $33 million wings. Don't you dare. Those, wi those wings cost some real moolah. No, but I'm just gonna hit the booster instead. Yeah, separation's still a pain in the ass in this game sometimes. They're like that overly attached girlfriend. They don't know when to quit. Alright, one of the boosters got damaged, but they don't have parachutes, so I don't think they'll be able to be recovered. Adding parachutes would probably just make this mission too dangerous. Because then they could deploy early upon ignition and cause problems. So it's easier just to, you know, say screw the boosters. The shuttle's the only thing coming home. In one piece, that is. We just gotta get high enough. We're almost at 2,000 meters per second. Once we get to a certain height and reach 2,500, we should be in the clear. There should be more than enough delta V. We got so quick to get a few of them. See the apoapsis? The closest point to the planet is the parallapsis. The furthest point 
for the furthest point of the orbit is the apolapsis. You gotta wait till you get to the apolapsis. When you start seeing a parallapsis point, you've reached orbit. You have to travel forward fast enough to fall around the Earth. And you know what? I'm just gonna turn this goddamn music off. Because it is annoying as hell and it's loud as fuck and no one can hear me. So, we just go into settings here. Music. Off. Thank you. That music is loud enough to wake the dead. Alright, I'm gonna just drop below. As soon as it drops below a certain number, the shuttle will become, uh, will have an unbalanced weight. So I'm gonna have to ditch this tank very soon. Yeah, see, so you can see the unbalance is starting to occur here. So you just do that, just warp immediately, and it'll stop, you know, tumbling towards you. Okay, we have a new apolapsis. In our orbit, we almost got a complete orbit. The shuttle will get us the rest of the way into orbit, and will also get us back. So we're going to wind up using uh, at least 55 to 65% of our fuel to get into orbit, and the rest is going to take us home. Alright. That just passed right an inch away from me. Had I been any closer, I would have lost a weight. Holy crap, that was close. Alright. See this? The other side of the planet is going to be a parallapsis. You've got to get it above 100,000 meters. And then we should be in the clear. Right, and it's out of the park. And that is how you get a space shuttle into orbit. Complicated, yes. Impossible, no. It can be done. You don't need no training involved to play this game. All you need is a little bit of know-how, a little bit of skill, and a little bit of practice. Because trust me, you, you will not get a shuttle into orbit your first try. I've failed plenty of times to learn how to get a shuttle into orbit. I can't remember what I named the very first shuttle I flew in this game. I think it was one of the stock ones that I flew for the first time. The Slim Shuttle. And even then I didn't get it into orbit once. Like, you really gotta know know your stuff to be able to play this game. Because otherwise, it's just a recipe for frustration. And it turns out, we didn't use 55 to 65% of our fuel, we only used 25. 
it looks like, or maybe 35, because we don't have as much oxi oxidizer as we do fuel. The rest of the liquid fuel, you know, will just help us fly to a safer location, such as if we're in the middle of the ocean and we try to land. Let's see if we can get some science. Science is one of those things that... Right? Looks like I've done this too many times before. Because I've flown this shuttle hundreds of times before. So, that is how you guys shuttle to orbit. So, I'm glad to show you guys that. So, I'll see you guys next episode for the return. You know, the return to Earth. Nathan Industries, out. Feel free to, you know, like and subscribe, whatever. You know, you know what they say. I'm just going to say Nathan Industries, out.